Welcome everyone to another Artist Loft uh, drawing class. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and tonight is the second part in a two-part class on creating your own vegetable or fruit-inspired illustrated character, which is quite a mouthful, but basically it is just a little two-part mini-series on uh, illustration and character illustration and creating, you know, a character for illustrating. And um, yeah, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to switch to my tabletop view here and I'll Oh, I'm going to wait until uh, Chanel has spotlighted my tabletop view. There you go, thanks. Um, so yeah, just wanted to remind you to tag your work from tonight with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes and uh, follow or tag me on uh, Instagram at Adrian Hodge art. Um, and that's just so I can see your your work that you post on on Instagram, mostly because when I go looking for work that people have posted with those hashtags. There's so many things, you know, Michaels has so many classes that they offer and they can often get buried uh, in those hashtags. So if you tag me, then I'll be sure to see your work or you can always um, email it to me. There's my email. It's adrianhodge at gmail.com or you can find me on Facebook or uh, Chanel can uh, drop my link tree in the chat. And if you're watching this recording later, I'm um, easy to find online as well. Um, but yeah, the, that link tree link will have a link to all of my links um, online. And then here's just a couple of my business cards with some of my personal work that I do with uh, primarily calligraphy ink. If you want to check out some of my uh, personal work, which is often painted with ink but very drawing based. Um, and then yeah, tonight's class is really fun. It's for all ages and on, on character illustration. And we started last week in the, the first part of the class, we sketched out our, uh, our interesting fruit or uh, vegetable and got a nice just idea of the, the contour lines in our, our fruit or vegetable that we were using. So I also attached my reference photo to the supply list. And if you didn't get your own fruit or vegetable, you can obviously draw mine with me, but hopefully you'll change it a little bit and make it your own in some way. Uh, the first thing we did was we just uh, sketched it and we focused on the shapes of the shadows and light, the value and the contour lines that uh, you see wrapping around um, that vegetable or fruit to make it feel three dimensional. And then we looked at interesting characteristics that the fruit or vegetable might have that we could personify or give it, you know, uh, some character. So the one thing that I did was this little spot on my sweet potato looked like an eye and this looked like a nose. And so I was very straightforward how I sketched out this character um, a little bit. I kind of just gave it, you know, life more through um, the implied line of certain areas and, and focusing on those features. Um, but we also talked about how to, you know, make more cartoonish figures or, or features and, and adding things to it and also just how to, you know, make yours a little bit different than mine. So one thing I noticed was these spots on here felt like they could be a, another face or this one looked like a face. So, you know, maybe you could take a, a different approach if you're using the, the same source image as me. Um, so we sketched all that out. Then we um, did a another sketch of it using a blue and red a blue or red colored pencil so um i just realized i skipped over reviewing supplies um so all we used in the first class was our sketching pencils a synthetic eraser and the uh, blue and or red colored pencil but this week uh and then we 
began to use the the alcohol based markers. So that was the the main supply for this class is the uh, I had the 24 piece set of the artist loft uh, dual tip sketch markers, the alcohol based markers. And I know in all of these classes, I tend to have a lot of subs like, you know, you don't necessarily have to use these pencils, you can use whatever you have. Um, and oftentimes people want an easy replacement for the supplies that I'm using. But when it comes to these alcohol based markers for what we're doing with character illustration, you really do want to have these particular markers. Um, so I know a lot of folks in the class last week didn't have them. Hopefully the fact that it was a two part series gave you some time to grab I dropped one on the floor um, to grab a set of these because um, yeah, you're definitely gonna want them with what we're doing tonight. So last week I just uh, briefly um, talked about blending and why these are so great and how they can, let me just scoot it down so you can see my margins down here, how they blend together and you can use analogous colors and get them to really blend. So I kind of just sampled and tested a few uh, similar colors down here, but this this week tonight we're going to um, really. Oh, I got a few little charcoal smudges on here from a charcoal project I was working on. Let me get those out of there. Um, yeah, tonight we are going to really create a palette um, for what we're going to uh, blend with these alcohol based markers, and I'll break down using my reference photo how to blend all the colors that I'm seeing in this image in order to get an effect like this. So are there any questions about supplies other than what can be subbed for these alcohol based markers? We haven't had any questions yet. Okay, great. Um, please excuse my camera moving. Usually I can get everything in one shot there, but I had to move it down so you could see my margins. Okay, I might have to do that again as I create the little palette here. All right, so um, yeah, and then we did the sketch with the, the blue and red uh, pencils. And after class, I always do a little Q&A on my Instagram page. So um, where I just continue the discussion from the class. And I know a lot of folks from uh, these classes have joined me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art after class at about 7.05 p.m. Um, Central Time. But in the Q&A last week um, on Instagram, we talked a lot about why to use the uh, blue and red pencils and what advantage that gives you when you're illustrating. And the advantage that they, they give you is that well, for one, they sit on the surface of the paper, especially uh, the watercolor paper that we're using, which I just realized I did not mention we're using watercolor paper. So I think I touched on all this, the supplies again. Tonight, we're going to be doing our final uh, sketch here um, on the watercolor paper using the alcohol based markers. So we're really, if you've done all the steps up until here, you're not going to need anything other than the markers and the, the watercolor paper and your your reference uh, photo or uh, fruit or vegetable. But um, when we go over this, we're going to be able to, all of these blue lines are going to disappear. We're not going to really need to erase uh, too much. But if we were to draw this with pencil, like if I were to just uh, do this in pencil on my watercolor paper, um, you know, the alcohol based markers would still do a wonderful job of covering up most of the pencil lines. And if I drew really lightly, it would be very easy to erase all of my preliminary sketch. But um, especially if I added any shading or value like this with the pencil, then the markers are maybe going to blend in with that and mix together. And uh, with the blue or red, it's just going to disappear underneath it. So you're going to end up with this effect that feels, you know, very, you know, illustrated. I don't know what other word to use. Um, animated, like it's, you know, 
it's coming to life in an, an animated sense. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with mixing up a palette here. I'm using painting terms because we're we're going to be blending very much like we are painting, and I'm just going to look at all break down all the colors that I'm seeing in my sweet potato here. But if you are using, you know, obviously a different reference than me, you're going to have different colors that you're going to be mixing. I know last week we had a couple of folks pulled up the uh, fruit or vegetable that they were using, and um, I was really excited to see that and I'm excited to see where those end up. But um, if you're doing, you know, a completely different color palette than me, what I want you to take away from the, the process of creating a palette as I do this is you want to find at least three or four colors in any one area. So rather than um, taking just like a pink or even in an area like this where it feels like it's mostly one color like right there feels very pink and peachy right so I might be tempted to just take my this color uh, this powder color or maybe just the. Um, you know the pearl color or something that feels very peachy or maybe just the pink right just a, a light. Um, where's my light pink you know, it'd be very easy to just take the light pink. But if I find three or four or maybe even five or six colors in that color family, so let's say you're doing a green bell pepper, and I'm going to use uh, James in the crowd. I remember he had a, a bell pepper uh, last week. James, can we spotlight James actually? Will you hold up your bell pepper? Let's look at it. Let's see how many colors we can pick out of that bell pepper for you. I see he's holding it up. Okay, there we go. So there's a bit of a glare on it and the light, you know, is maybe doing that when it's sitting on the table as well. So, but that, you know, you might want to get like a blue or a gray for the way it's reflecting some light. I don't know if it's doing that from just your screen. It might be doing that sitting on the table as well. No, um, but you definitely want, you know, a dark green, obviously. Um, maybe a black, maybe a gray, maybe a mid mid tone green. Like, let's see what I what we have in this twenty four piece set. There's just our a regular green. Wow, there's not a whole lot of greens. But you, since these blend so well, we could use the Gulf blue and the Canary and see what kind of green we get when we blend. Uh, you know the the yellow and the blue together to make make a green. You could mix together a couple of your different blues since there are so many blues in this set, like a pastel blue and a sea foam, and then mix that with your canary yellow and see what types of greens come about when you mix those colors, you know? So that's what I want you to do. If you're not using my reference photo, uh, I want you to take this time to really experiment with all the different colors in this set um, of, of markers and combine them and blend them and see, you know, how well you can match the different colors that are coming up in, um, in your, um, your fruit or vegetable. And I see somebody asked in the chat why I recommend the alcohol-based markers and it's because of the way that they blend. Um, because you really cannot get this level of blending like let me just um, well i'm going to demonstrate it as I, I get start mixing these together, but um, I went into it last week as well and kind of defended my case for why you need these alcohol based markers in the, the first class. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, and I also talked about it in the Q and a afterwards on Instagram and asked, you know, people who were in the Q&A, like other artists that I saw joined, like, does anybody know of any other markers that blend the way that alcohol-based markers do? And several people agreed, like, you really can't blend. You can get, you know, if you were to use watercolor markers might be the closest thing to what these can do, but um, you're going to, have to add water to get those to bleed together and they're not they are blending but they're blending when they bleed 
And these do not bleed, but they blend amazingly well. Okay, so let me just start making my little palette here. So I've got uh, all of these skin tone colors on my sweet potato. So I'm gonna use the powder, the pearl, and gather all the ones that I'm gonna put together. Um, the hazelnut. I definitely want that, that peony pink that I had a moment ago. I want the pink. I want the lavender because there's there's a lot of purple here in these shadows. So I want the purple. I want the gray, the neutral gray. And then also they come with a blender, which I, I talked about in the first class as well. In the last 10 or 15 minutes of part one of this class, I really went in depth just talking about why these these markers are are necessary for what we're doing in this particular class. Um, so I've got the blender, which no other markers that I know of blend like this. Please tell me if I'm wrong, if you know of, of other um, types of markers that, that blend like this. I'll go ahead and grab the praline. I'm looking for like a jar. Oh, and I definitely need the black. Um, that's it. That's a lot of colors, right? Um, for this sweet potato. I think that's all that I used here. Okay, so just test those out down here. And I'll kind of layer them on top of each other as I test them. So I'm just doing this in the margins under my my sketch in that um, that blue colored pencil. You could have used red as well. So I'm just gonna test them and just hold them up next to my my reference photo and see see how they match and see if there's anything missing. So that was the hazelnut powder, I believe, and the pearl. And then I've got the praline. And I'm just going to put that right in the middle of the hazelnut and the the powder and you can see how that just kind of blended together right that's the powder again i've got two powders um and then the peony pink when that layers in there it doesn't disappear like those other uh the hazelnut and the praline kind of disappear into each other but it's still we want that pink to kind of in several spots all right, and then I'm gonna put the, the lavender and the gray next to each other. And maybe the pearl. And then once I've got those colors that are gonna end up next to each other, in my palette here, I'll use the blender on top of them. And it just kind of bleeds them into each other and softens the lines where they're touching. Not all of the colors are going to perfectly, you know, seep into each other. But um, for the most part, they, they blend really nicely and almost give like a watercolor effect. Um, you can overdo it with the blender. So it's good to practice off to the side with a little little palette swatches like this. So just take, you know, your three or four colors that you're seeing in, in your subject and test them out on uh, the margins or on a separate piece of watercolor paper and see how they blend together, see what happens when you, you add the blender. And by doing that, you know, you can get a sense of what's gonna happen when you add them to your final sketch and you can practice that way. You could also, you know, just sketch your, 
end up sketching this a couple of times. So if it doesn't turn out exactly the way that you want it the first time, you can always draw it again. Okay, any questions before I start um, applying my palette to, to my final? Um, yeah, there was a couple. Um, so Delilah asked, uh, what would you recommend for a banana? Like what colors would you recommend? Um, does she have the banana? Can we spotlight her and look at her banana? Uh, okay. okay. Yep. I see her. I'm very literal and visual. I need <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I was curious, like what stage of ripeness is the <laughs> banana in? Uh, okay. So yeah, you definitely want some, some brown, some brown. dark brown and some light brown. If you've got the same set as me, uh, which hopefully you do, um, you probably want the, uh, that coffee brown for those darker lines and spots and that praline will give you those lighter browns. And then you're definitely going to want to mix together, like probably that praline and hazelnut and like pearl to get the brown to blend in those places where it's fading into the, the yellow. And then yeah, your canary yellow and yeah, you don't really have any green spots on it. You probably want like that, uh, where is it? Yeah, this pale pink, like for your highlights, pale pink. And then you're gonna leave some areas blank where it's like really pale and white, like leave some areas of the paper blank for the, the, the white. Anybody else wanna hold up their, their fruit and let me help you find a palette like that as well? I'm happy to do it. I think it's really helpful. I think that makes, uh, that's going to make or break it here is finding your your right color scheme and I mean really just you know if you're watching this later on your YouTube and you're using a different um, you know reference than what we've mentioned so far um, just look at your your piece of fruit or vegetable and try to find five five or six colors in any one area like really ain't you might only end up with three or four or two or three, but try to find five or six because there's always one more color in there than you're missing. There are also are some really neat apps out there that you can use um, like for iPhone, there's an app called Palette Cam. And um, it's funny, I haven't mentioned this in any of these classes before. When I teach my in-person painting classes, it seems like I'm always making people download these apps. Um, so if you upload a photo into, and even if you have an Android and you search for palette cam, you will find a, um, an app that's similar and does the same thing. Like it'll, the AI will recognize what you're looking for. Um, but so you upload the photo into, uh, the app and it'll have a little cursor and then you just hover that cursor over every different color that you see in your photograph or just every different area and you press the button and it creates a little swatch of that color so then it breaks it down into a um, little you know palette at the bottom of the photograph and shows you all the colors that you clicked on so the more uh, variety of areas that you click on the more colors you're going to see and that's so helpful because our eyes perceive color in a very interesting way and the psychology of it is fascinating and if you know it's hard not to like go off in my like color theory spiel here but all you really need to know is that uh, your eye is going to perceive a color differently based on what's around it like if I cover up everything else in this photo it's much easier to see that gray and purple that's happening there but if I just do that it's very easy to just, you know, look at that and just maybe see like brown, you know, like, well, it's brown, it's a sweet potato, it's brown and it's light brown, right? But it, it's not, there's lots of more colors happening there than uh, brown and, and light brown. Okay, um, so moving on. Um, and yeah, and if you're really enjoying this class, I realized I didn't uh, say this at the beginning, but I wanted to mention that, you know, most of these classes uh, through uh, Michael's Artist Loft are free, but we do have premium classes. And one premium class that's coming up at the end of the month is uh, one on drawing eyes. I've only recently started 
focusing on different aspects of portrait drawing. And if you, you know, a lot of people are interested in drawing portraits, so I'm going to be breaking down drawing the eye, and that's a premium class. So there is a, a fee for the class, but it's very affordable. And uh, Chanel can drop the link to that premium class in the, the chat. And if you're watching later on YouTube, you can just search for the, the class title, Artist Loft Tips and Tricks for Drawing Eyes and you should be able to find it under classes on the Michaels website. Um, I just know a lot of folks have been not wanting to miss out on those upcoming premium classes, so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and dive in and start uh, adding my marker colors, this, this palette that I just outlined to my, my creature here. So I'm going to start with the most, the lightest color first or just the most common color. So that would be uh, probably this powder color is the most uh, neutral beige that I'm seeing throughout. Uh, the lightest color would probably be the pearl, but uh, the powder color is the most prominent. It, I see it in the most places. So I'm just gonna bounce around and it's hard for me to get my reference photo and uh, on the, the paper, on the screen at the same time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to keep it off screen, but I, I included my reference photo in the supply list. So you can pull that up on your phone or print it out. Hopefully you already did that. But I'm just gonna bounce around on my sweet potato character, looking for all the places that I see this color. And I'm just gonna start filling in I don't want to stick to one area too much just because um, I want to leave room for some other colors to mix in with this. So I'm looking at where I see that color standing out the most. And I mentioned this when we were sketching it, I want to follow the curves, follow those contour lines. So I spent a lot of time last week really outlining all the areas of um, contour lines on this particular vegetable and how how to illustrate that using you know pencil so and then we left this sketch pretty empty but we still want to maintain those contour lines so I followed that curve vertically and I'm following that curve horizontally as well I'm going to end up with quite a bit of this color because it is very prominent. So same thing with, you know, with that banana, you're probably going to be using a lot of that canary. But just, you know, if there's a lot of areas, like the banana was a good example because it had a lot of brown. Um, so in all those patchy moments where the brown is very prominent, you can kind of leave that blank for now and just fill in the the areas where the, the prominent color is, is sticking out the most. But the wonderful thing about these alcohol-based markers that makes them so easy to blend is that when you do, it, it's a lot like painting. When you put the lighter color in and you start to blend with a color that's maybe you know, in the same color family, but slightly darker, like I'm about to do. I'm going to start to add um, the, oh wait, that's the my other powder. Um, I'll go with the, the praline next. When I start to add my praline next to that, the praline doesn't necessarily overtake the powder color. It it blends with it. You can still see the other color coming through. You can't say that about a lot of markers. Um, most markers are not going to give you that level of, of blending, that quality of um, you know, maintaining a, a lighter color and making it possible to blend them. So now I've got the pearl and I'm usually just sticking to my, um, the brush tip sides of, of these markers. 
but if you prefer the, the chisel side, then by all means use whichever one you like the most. But yeah, this uh, pearl color really blends with that powder. It almost feels like it's very, very close. So they blend really nicely, but it's a little lighter. All right, let me get some of that lavender going. And if there's a certain color that you're adding in your drawing and you're like, oh, well, I just really love the way that color looks next to those other colors, you know, feel free to embellish. I mean, we're, we're creating a, an illustration here. So by all means, embellish and exaggerate. And, you know, if something's like really working for you visually, feel, you know, deviate from your what you're seeing in your photograph as much as you want. And I know I'm talking about, you know, blending lots of colors here. Um, but I'm just trying to get that effect that I had in my example, but I, I showed this last week as well. This is my eight year old daughter's um, illustration of my sketch. So I printed out this sketch for her when I was working on planning the class. Um, she asked me to print it out so she could color on top. Well, she wanted to color on top of this one and I told her she couldn't. So I printed it out and she used the markers too. Uh, and she did blend a little bit. She used, you know, a couple of different pinks and, um, and the lavender and the yellow there. But, um, you know, it, it looks lovely if you want to just use a couple colors and, you know, make it a little more solid and not not blend and do this this technique that I'm showing you. You know, there are no rules. It's it's hard for me sometimes to lose or it's easy for me to lose track of that, but there really are are no rules when I'm trying to like teach the rules and and teach people how to to achieve certain techniques you always have to stop and remind yourself that art is supposed to be fun and it's supposed to feel playful and enjoyable to you. And if attempting to do what I'm doing is not working for you, if it's not feeling enjoyable and fun to you and you'd rather just color it in however you want, then please do that. So now I'm adding the gray on top of that lavender. I realize I'm kind of looking at my other example to illustrate this instead of looking at my actual sweet potato here. And then, yeah, don't forget all those like features that you added to yours. You might have, you know, a scarf or a swimsuit or something else interesting happening to your your character that's that's different. So if you've done leave that, you know, area blank if you're planning to add something like that in the in that spot later. So I'm going from light to dark with my colors with that color palette that I outlined. So I, I did my kind of skin tones first and now I'm working on the the lavenders and the grays. And yeah, look how that gray blends with that powdery color. That's really nice. And if things are not blending exactly how you want them, then you can add the blender. I'm gonna wait to add my blender and I'm gonna actually give the bottom of my sweet potato a little more of this peach colored base because I want it to blend with that gray because even though I see a lot of gray and purple right here I see the the flesh color underneath it so I'm gonna make sure I get that in there I'm definitely starting to illustrate how the reason why I'm I think these alcohol-based markers are so necessary for what we're doing here because that 
that quality that's coming across there when I start to blend multiple layers together is very nice. I'm still following the, the contours as I add additional layers. So I'm kind of alternating between a horizontal brush stroke, if you will, with the brush tip pen. Little hatching lines, I'm flicking my wrist to get them to kind of taper off as I apply them. And I'm following that curve. So just like in my sketch, how I illustrated all those round curves on this like torpedo shape down here and doing the same thing with the markers as I apply them. Chanel, are there any questions jumping out at this point that I could answer? Uh, let's see. Um, Allie said that she's doing a potato. She's using burnt sienna yellow and a yellow ochre. Any other colors you see? I don't know if she still has her cam on. Hold on one second. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be happy to look at a, a potato and pick out the colors. It looks like she's showing her picture. I don't know if she has like a um, Oh, okay. Oh, I remember reference the, as well. The photo. Yeah, do you have the photograph, Allie? that we could look at of the actual potato and see what other colors are in the photograph. Yeah, I remember you had it on your phone. Oh my God, I love how he is like, oh no, and the knife's coming for him. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got the burnt sienna and you've got a yellow. Um, do you have that coffee colored one? Cause you definitely want a dark brown. Um, I guess, let's see. Yeah, something that's like this hazelnut and this coffee. You want to, you want some darker browns for sure in there. Like those, those lighter colors are really, really nice for the base layer. But just yeah, You're mixing your brown and your your black together too um, to get it darker would be nice. That's awesome. I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, please uh, share these on social media and tag me because I want to, you know share share y'all's work or just see it if you don't want you know to publicize it just send it to me this is fun it's just always rewarding okay so i've got a lot of that purple and gray going there but i need more of the brown to come through so let me go back to my hazelnut and my praline here There we go. And then, yeah, I'm usually not a huge fan with outlining things in black, but, uh, you know, for an illustration, you kind of want that. So, but the way that I'm going to add my black is going to be very similar to my example here. I'm going to do it in, I'm going to be very mindful of this area right here. So if there's a moment on yours where you're like, oh, I really like how I made my black outline disappear right there, because that that's the whole mouth. Like I didn't draw the mouth. I just implied the mouth by not drawing anything right there. By leaving it blank, your eyes do the rest of the work for me and you see a mouth even though I didn't put one there. So that's the area where I just want to make sure I touch on that before before I'm done here. I'm probably not going to get to all my like extra accoutrements that I, I added last week. Like I added um, this thing right here, the little light hanging off. Hopefully I will, but I want to just get all my layers of the, the potato at least down and you know get the character to come to life if i don't get to all the extras i added then that's okay we got 20 minutes though we're doing pretty good so now i'm really getting it really is a lot like painting because you're getting your initial layers down and then your second layers and on each 
pass, I'm starting to fill things in more and more. I'm not using the blender just yet because I don't want to over blend anything too much. Um, I feel like the, the blender should be the last thing just because if you decide you want to add something else on top of it, sometimes it's hard to get it to show up in the same way. So don't, you know, get too blender happy. It's easy to do because the blender is really fun. That's why it's nice to do it off to the side on your, your palette first. I'll put a little more gray and purple up here by the face, even though, and that's really just because I'm trying to imply a different A feature, facial feature here. I'm kind of doing this under the nose, even though I don't see that on my sweet potato. I'm doing that in mind just to achieve that, that face. Like the little snapping sound of these lids is <laughs> distracting. But you gotta take care of your markers and put those lids back on, especially if there's any kids in the the mix tonight. That's that's always the hardest thing to train younger students to do is to just put the lids back on the markers. And to do it gently so you're not smashing your brush tips. All right, let's see. I think I need a little more gray. So yeah, I kind of made a few of my different colors up here on the, the head imply like eyebrows and, you know, just A bit of a face there. This one's going to look a little different than my other example. And if you're really just following along with me and trying to do everything I'm doing and yours is not looking exactly like mine, please embrace your, your unique um, your unique hand, the hand of, of your art, because we're all going to do something a little bit different because we're not robots, right? And everyone has a unique touch when they're, they're using a supply and it's not going to come out exactly like someone else's. So embrace that. Don't look at it as something wrong or bad that's happening. It's just different. Try to find something you like about the way yours is looking. And if you're feeling that, that comparison monster bubbling up, and that's a lot easier said than done. I, I realize, but just have to say it. Okay, I added some dark pink on my other example, so I guess I better get some dark pink in there for this this coral reef pink. I'm kind of just using that to stress the the contour lines a little bit more. And I'm using a lot of a hatching technique, but uh, little lines that are, are stacking and following those contours. But you could also, you know, if you're feeling nervous about how you're layering and blending these, you could kind of stipple, use little dots as you add different colors. And that could also inspire some different character traits as well. Um, and since I put this one in the water, I feel like doing that makes it feel like even more of a sea creature. 
somehow. So because it like implies scales or, you know, water droplets reflecting off of the color of, of that creature. And that could also create just some variety of line as you're doing that. And see, as I start to get my darker colors on here, how that blue line at the, the edge of my, my sketch is definitely disappearing. There's not going to be too many moments where I need to erase that blue sketchy line. Oops. Uh, put some more gray down here. Oh yeah, and there's just, once you really start building up these layers, certain colors just really pull it all together. Like going over that whole thing right now with gray, I feel like is really pulling that part of my narwhal sweet potato together. Let me try to get this part going here. My kids told me the name of the fish that I was thinking of, you know, in Finding, uh, I think it's Finding Dory, where they encounter that, uh, that fish that's got like the little light bulb, or that's how they illustrate it in the movie, like hanging in front of it. That's what this reminds me of. I can't remember the name of the fish. My daughter knew it off the top of her head immediately. So I'm just building up the layers of this the same way I did the main part of the sweet potato, going from lighter color first and then adding the darker colors on top. And bouncing around, letting everything blend. There's a little bit more of like a fuchsia purple happening here. I'm going to use the magenta and the royal purple for the sprout part. That's what that color was that I, I accented my other example with. I used this magenta right here in a couple spots. I think I used it right there and then thought, oh, maybe not, but I still left it. <laughs> it sticks out quite a bit. I'll put it in there again. And then these last 10 minutes of the class really sneak up on you here. All right, I'm going to not narrate everything I do now and just try to fill this in as quickly as possible. I can always go back to my other example if I don't quite, quite make it. Janine says the uh, fish you're referring to is a angler fish. Thank you. Janine, yes. <laughs> all right, I'm looking for the right color that's going to pull all that together like the gray just did on the back side. And I think it's going to be the pink, the peony, like right here. I think if I add a bunch of pink, it's going to pull this together. And then, yeah, once you're in like the third and fourth layer of certain areas and you're ready to use that blender, you'll see how it just really ties it, ties those colors together and makes that makes that bleed happen. softens the, the lines where they, they touch. Okay, I'm 
I'm just going to keep adding colors and layers to try to build up the rest of my potato until it's about 655. Then I'm going to add that black outline. And then I want to see how you guys did with yours before we go. And then if there are any lingering questions about, you know, even your, your specific illustration or any of these techniques, you can join me on Instagram after the class for that Q&A. And if you can't make it to the Q&A, but you still want to hear what other people asked and what we talked about, I leave those up on my my Instagram so you can you know check it out later as well. So the way that I'm just making this feel nice and full and, and round is I'm just following those contours and building up layers. Like it doesn't happen right away. Things can feel really patchy at first, but if you build up enough layers and especially use that blender, those scratchy lines should disappear and it should feel nice and connected. If it's not feeling connected, if it's feeling disconnected and like a bunch of colors just kind of sitting next to each other, that's when you want to keep going, keep building up your layers and, you know, keep looking for those colors that can, uh, you know, kind of unify the colors that feel disconnected. Like right here, it was the gray. When I added the gray, that pulled it together. Right here, when I added the pink, it pulled it together. Maybe it's, you know, the, the yellow on the banana or a, a lighter, that pearl color, um, you know, whatever it is that feels like it could join an area that's feeling separate. Um, just keep going until you find it because it might not happen right away. Yeah, I wish we had more time for me to develop my whole background here on this creature. It was really fun how I put him in the water and put the clouds around him, but I wasn't sure if I would, would get to that in the hour. It was a little ambitious. I was mostly just trying to inspire some different ideas in the crowd. All right, I guess it's time to put the, the black on there. You can also kind of work your way up to adding the black by using your your dark brown if it feels like it's gonna. you know, be a little too stark, maybe add some of the darker moments with your, your dark brown first or one of the darker browns and then work your way up to it. Uh, you can also practice in your margins being very um, loose with the brush tip and just kind of, let me scoot it down a little bit more, you know, doing like a, a line that doesn't quite, it's not like a, a full line, like hover over your page with the tip of, of that brush tip and try to get a nice loose sketchy thing to happen. That's how I'm doing that. And that comes with many, many years of practice. I always like to say it's like, somebody who's really cool, who, you know, always looks like they just threw their perfect outfit together. But the truth is, they probably spent many hours trying to look that nonchalant, just like I have spent thousands of hours <laughs> drawing and drawing to be able to make that look effortless. So if it's annoying to see, you know, a professional artist to do something like that. Just know that we have suffered in, in a dark room by ourselves for many, many hours. And that's not what you saw. You just saw, you know, after 15 years of that, how, how I can make a line look really cool that way. If you guys have been with me since the beginning of these classes, you'll remember me talking a lot about my 
learning to play the guitar back in July and August and September, had myself a little private lesson teacher and I was practicing every day and I was getting better and I have just totally fallen off of that wagon because it's hard learning a new skill when you're you're not you know when you're a perfectionist and you you know how to do something else really well it's hard to you know be at that stage where you're you're not able to make something look or sound the way that you want it and um my partner and i were talking about that today and he jokingly said well you should just give up then <laughs> when i was making all my excuses for why i haven't been practicing my guitar since like november or so and i'm like no i'm not i'm not gonna give up i just need to get back to that daily practice anyway okay so there's my my black outline, but I'm being very careful to not put my pen all the way down. I'm not putting the tip all the way down and being very deliberate here. Um, and this, like I said, comes with years of practice to not make a really hard line. And I'm leaving it open right there. So that mouth is felt, but not actually drawn. Okay, uh, yeah, I wish I had more time to add all these extra features, but I'm just going to kind of give those a little implied line. And then we've got two minutes left. I'd love to see where you guys are at with these illustrations before we go. Can we spotlight a few people and and see their examples? Oh my goodness, Kylie, I love it. I love the broccoli the broccoli family yeah. so fun yeah keep building up those layers and that'll really oh james look at that really fun that's a great technique the way you're applying your your colors there that's very stylized i love it shauna or swarna sorry oh it's a little duck Oh my gosh, so cute. Really cute. And there's that potato. Oh, I see the darker brown. Oh, I love how you're doing the eyes, like with the, the little hatching and, and stippling, but then one eye feels almost like hypnotized. It's got like the that spiral feeling like a hit. And the mouth is so perfect. That's really great. Oh, yay. Another narwhal sweet potato. So cute. Anybody else? Oh, there's a banana. Delilah. Oh, he's so happy. Look at him. <laughs> love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, I wish you guys would post these and tag me so I can share them. They're really fun. Need to still add some color to that one, but he's got a really cute little face and almost like a beak. And I see some arms. I might be misinterpreting that, but I'm seeing some cuteness. By Griffin. Oh, wow. Wow. That is incredible. Oh, I love that. Look at those colors. Oh my gosh. And the detail on all of the extra. Wow. Please post that and tag me. I would love to, to share that from the class. Oh, Barbara, let's see. Oh, look at the little tie, the little necktie on the pair. Yes. Oh, I love how you turned the stem into a, a beak and the eye. Oh, that's perfect. And I love the roundness there. You really captured the, the contours and the curve there for the the head that's really nice oh these are so fun this is what i was hoping for all right anybody else i think that one's the last one the last one oh these were so great well thank you all so much it's so rewarding for me to see those those finished products um after something like this um and yeah if anybody wants to stick around and join me on instagram live and you know keep talking about illustrating with these techniques. And then next week is a class on uh, 
reflective light on black paper using metallic colored pencils and a, a white uh, artist loft marker to add accents and, and you can find those same place you found this class and hope to see you for that one next week as well. And then the, the premium class is two weeks from tonight, that one on drawing eyes. So thank you all and have a lovely evening.